Okay, sorry you guys, it's, I'm a little late. It's 11.08 right now because I cannot get Facebook to work at all. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'm just gonna do this anyways because I told you I'd be here. And this will live on YouTube. And maybe I can share the link later. Weird, I don't know. It was working fine earlier. Uh, okay, well, if you're here, let me know how you're doing, where you're coming in from, and I will get the show on the road. <laughs> first things first, I wanted to share my Burnside bibs. I have posted about this a couple of times, I think, on Instagram. And I just wanted to talk about So House 7 real quick before I get into the live demo. Uh, this is So House 7 is one of my favorite sewing pattern companies ever. I've made quite a few of their patterns and every single one is written so well. It's very clear. There's no extraneous wording and like paragraphs. It's not like that at all. And they all turn out. The sizing is great. Uh, each, each pattern that I've done is wearable. It's not overly complicated or too fancy or anything like that. So I really recommend Sew House 7. Uh, and I have two kits in the shop of the fabrics that I use. This is from Anna Maria Conservatory. Hi, Connie. Hi, Debbie. Yay, I'm glad you guys found me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Facebook, but we will move on. Uh, so this, these are my Burnside bibs. Now, normally the pants don't stick to me, but I've got on uh, winter tights because <laughs> I'm so cold. Uh, so anywho, this is how they look. They kind of cinch in the back with these straps and ties. Super comfortable uh, pockets, really deep pockets, which hold my phone very nicely. And then what I did just for funsies is I made the, the bib part is lined and I made that a different fabric. So I won't untie though because Lord knows if I'll get it retied. So I put four yards of the fabric, which I made mine with about two and a quarter. Um, I think four yards is plenty and a pattern. So there's bundle number one, which is, I think, the colorway I use, and bundle number two, which is the same print pattern, but a different colorway. So, so hungryhippie.com if you want to grab those, I highly recommend. And I'll be probably stocking more of their patterns in the shop. If anyone is interested, let me know. Okay. Yay. I also just got in some new cork. It's leopard print with gold flecks. And I think it's so pretty. That's probably not going to be in super focus. Uh, I cannot wait to use this. I'm going to put just a few rolls in the shop and you guys let me know if you like it and then I can get a lot in. I know I only have three other corks right now, the teal, the pepper, and the natural with gold flex. And I think that they're, uh, I think everyone likes them really nicely and, and a lot, <laughs> but this is a different company. So um, Bellagio, if you're familiar. So let me know. That'll go up today in the shop. Okay, let's get into the project. So for this project, I have a free PDF for you with the pattern piece. And this has been a free tutorial on my website previously, but today I'm going to mix it up by not using the snap and also by lining it because I really like how this Ruby Star Society fabric looks with the peach crock. I think it's so pretty. And it's not hard to uh, add the lining and it's not hard to have the closure strap. But I had a few emails asking me how to add that strap, so let's get into it. I'm gonna switch to the overhead camera. Give me just a second here so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so there we are. So my computers, um, I didn't print, I printed <laughs> I printed double side, so I had to draw my top. But you will cut out the round. Let me turn down this light. Sorry about that. Looks a little bright there. Okay, so you will cut out this piece on a separate piece of paper, 
and then tape it to the top and you'll just match the circles very easy like all my other patterns if you've ever worked with them and then you'll have this big long piece you will cut out one exterior you can use fabric if you want just interface it so it has some nice body i like sf 101 you can also use foam if you like so one exterior one lining I have already fused my SF 101 to the back of my lining. I always do that for lining for quilting cotton fabric because I think it's easier to work with. Now on this uh, pattern piece, I have a dashed line here that says optional strap placement if not using a strap closure. Oh, sorry about this. I need to see you guys. Hi, hi Mary. Okay. So that is one and a half inches up. And what I recommend is that you cut your strip at least an inch this way and then wider than your case, just so it's easy to sew on, okay? So I put my strap so that the edge, let me flip it over so you can see what I mean. The, the placement on the pattern piece, I put it so that that top edge hits that line, okay? You just, all you wanna make sure of is that when we fold this case together, this flat piece can fit under there nicely. So now I'm going to take this to the machine. I'm gonna use clips, oops. I'm gonna use clips to hold it in place while I sew this down. I'm just gonna tack the edges. You don't sew across the middle. It's just along the edges here, and this will get hidden by the seam allowance in just a couple of minutes here. Oh my gosh, let me get this even first. I think my desk is too high. Let me lower it. There we go, that looks better. Sorry about my head there. <laughs> All right, let's flip to the machine. Look away for a second. I'm gonna spin the camera around. Okay, so now I'm just going to put on my Teflon foot, which mine is white. It makes sure that I have an easy time sewing vinyl. Move my other foot out of the way. And I'm just going to sew across this edge here. I'm using Guterman thread, like I all-purpose thread, like I always do. And I just go back and forth a couple of times to catch that. Don't go too many times because you don't want to perforate your vinyl. Okay, so it's sewn on there. And now I will trim those edges on the side. All right, I'm going to turn the camera around again. So I'm just going to trim this. There's that. I'm not joking, we're, we're so close to being done. Isn't that nuts? So then you're gonna place your lining and your exterior right sides together. You know the drill. I use clips to hold mine in place. Now you can leave your opening wherever you like it best for turning right side out later. I like to just have it along a straight edge. So I'll just leave mine down here, I think. I think it will be easiest for me. Some people like to have it on the side because it's really well hidden along a side. Okay, this, oh, hi Pat. This is the vinyl needle case, I call it, on the website, but really it's, I mean, it's not really just a needle case. I put my packs of needles in this, um, but you could use it for anything, even gift cards for stocking stuffers. Okay, let me, let me transition this here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Now I'm just going to leave that bottom open so I can turn this easily. I'm going to start on the side. And here we go. Okay. 
Now in the original tutorial, I don't have you line it. And the case is great without a lining too because the back of the vinyl is soft, it's white, it's fine. So if you're nervous about this step, adding the lining, just omit it the first time and run through the, the tutorial without the lining. On that curved edge, just keep that outer edge of the foot along the outer edge of your fabrics. Don't pull. Curb sewing isn't as hard as people make it out to be. Just have, have confidence. Okay. So because this is vinyl, I am going to just snip along this curved edge to give that some ease so that my curve really pops nicely. I also like to kind of grade the curve down. So what I mean by that, I'll flip the camera because I think it will be easier. Let's do one, put this on the table here. What I mean by this is I come into the curve and I just grade that seam down quite a bit. So there's not so much seam allowance on the curve, especially. Now you wanna be mindful not to snip too far into your seam allowance. So I just clip right up to the sewing line, not through it, okay? All right, let's turn this right side out. If it's um, giving you trouble turning, just take a hair dryer and warm up the vinyl a little bit. It, it can really make a big difference. My house is super cold. I have a very old house, like a hundred years, over a hundred. So it's drafty and cold. So I'm struggling more than you would. Most likely. Okay, so now it's coming through. I'm just careful not to uh, pull too hard on the seams. Almost there. I have my iron turned on. You can iron, never touch your iron directly to the vinyl surface. Iron from the quilting cotton side or the wrong side of the vinyl if you're not doing the lining. Light touches, quick touches. Don't let it sit there for a long time but I do this all the time. I make a lot of bags with vinyl. I have no troubles with the iron. If you want to use a pressing cloth, please feel free. Sometimes I don't have my, uh, my tool turn, my turning tool up here, which helps me press out these seams really nicely. It's like a chopstick. So sometimes I take a pin and pull out my seams. Um, a little bit more there. Sometimes if you kind of roll the edge, it helps. Okay, so let me push this so you can, I'm just taking my iron on the quilting cotton side and giving it all a quick press so that my seams look good, everything is popping. I love this fabric. Oh, did I tell you I'm getting full collections of Ruby Star Society fabric in very soon? Okay, so there we are. Now, on the pattern piece, there's a fold line. So I'm gonna switch you back over here to this view. So if you kind of lay your case here and envision, see here's the fold line. So if you fold it up like this, now I still have to tuck in my open edge. Don't look at that part yet. You can see how that flap will come down and fit right under that strap there. Now in the original, I have a snap here and a snap here and it comes down and snaps, but 
I know a lot of you don't have uh, the cam snap press, which is the only snapping tool I use. I do not mess with hand snap setters. I don't have good success with those. So I wanted to make this doable for everyone that doesn't have that press. Yay. Oh, hi, Alyssa. <laughs> Skulls, she found us. Thanks to Elizabeth. Thank you. Yeah, you guys, I don't know what's going on with Facebook. I can't post at all. And earlier you saw I did. So I don't know what's going on. I can't post on Instagram. Something is, I, I don't know what, but you know how these things happen. So we're just going to roll with it. So I'm tucking down that open edge. And usually I like to just put some clips here, even though they're immediately going to come out while I sew that closed. Okay. So let me switch back over. I know this is a lot of switching, but uh, I want you guys to really be able to see what's happening here. And also notice how with that Teflon foot, I have no issues sewing directly on the vinyl. I'm going to bring my needle up. If you hear snoring, that's Tori, my pug. <laughs> She's right here in her bed, her fuzzy bed, snoring away. Get my pedal here. I'm just going to go right across that edge. Great. Okay, so now I can fold. Now, if you need to move your fold mark or your fold line compared to what I have on the pattern, please do. A lot of this depends on your seam allowance and you just trust yourself on where you should fold. If you want a bigger flap, like way down here, then fold a little bit higher or lower. You know what I mean? You don't, you never have to do exactly what a pattern says. I just want you to know you have permission. <laughs> always to adjust. Trust yourself. So there it is. That's going to hold it nicely. I think I kind of like, well, maybe I want it a little bit there. I think I like it there the best. So I'm going to, I'm going to press that with my fingers and make a crease. I'm going to take the flap out and now I'm going to sew down these sides. Let me get my clips here. The biggest thing is you just want to make sure it's even and uh, straight across, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you have time, or let's say you're batch sewing these, I would leave it like this or use a little rubber mallet Oh, I have mine right here. Or lay a heavy book, you know, on it and let it flatten out for a little bit if you want to. If you're rammy like me and don't have a lot of patience, just go ahead and sew it. <laughs> Backstitch at that top edge because that's what will get the most uh, stress. So sometimes what I do, this is a little thick here. Sometimes I like to put hand crank my needle down. Now, if oh dear, if you're having some issues, you might need a hump jump. And that keeps your foot level because usually what the reason your needle will break if it's not hitting your plate, it's because your foot isn't level. There we go. It's not really that thick here, but I've been using this needle a lot. I should have probably changed it. See, it's okay to go slow. Sometimes I'm nervous and I just have to go slow on this part. If you feel you need to come slightly inside all those seams together, just do it. It's okay. And this is just a plain old home machine. This is not an industrial. It's not special. It's all metal, which I think makes a big difference. I wouldn't do this on one of my plastic machines. 
Okay, so one side is done. Now I'm going to do the other side. Usually you want to feed it in the same way. So since I sewed top to bottom, I should turn it over and sew top to bottom this way too. Because if, if I tried to do it this way and sew bottom to top, sometimes your, your layers will shift and then one side is just slightly higher than the other. And that might make you mad. It would me. After all that work. <laughs> Almost done. This machine, I have to control it with my foot so there's no speed timer or anything on it. So that's why sometimes it might sound funny. It's like all foot control, which I like personally. So then I'm going to trim all my threads here and the case is finished. And I, what I do with these a lot of times is uh, put some Starbucks cards in them and give them to teachers because it's a really fast make. Like it doesn't matter if they don't have an appreciation for handmade goods because this literally took me, what, a few minutes. So you can put your cards in there. And this needs another press, this edge does, but that's okay. I'll, I'll let a book sit on it later. And you just put that flap right through there. And there we are. I mean, it's pretty, it's cute, and it's reusable. So even if they didn't keep this, they could use it for, you know, gift giving down the line. So what I used was the peach crock. And I do have this in 18 inch cuts in the shop at SoHungryHippie.com. If you don't want to get a full roll, I have the smaller cuts, the 18 inch square. You could get, well, this case is oh, five inches across. So five, yeah, at least three, at least six cases, I think, that for exteriors only. I used Ruby Star Society for my lining. But I did want to mention, these would be fantastic in cork. Even if you didn't line it, the cork on the back is still okay. And I think it would still look really nice. Better than a plastic cello sleeve anyways. So there you have it. I'm going to switch here to see if anyone has any questions. Let's see. Which machine are you sewing with today? Connie says, this is my uh, Bernina 1008. Super, super basic machine. It's what I learned on and I'm just really comfortable with it. She can sew through anything, basically, I think. I mean, <laughs> I don't wanna test that too much, huh? Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm using today. You guys see me sew a lot on the Janome Skyline, but I don't have a Teflon foot for my Janome. So I don't wanna risk trying to sew with a regular foot. There's just too much that can go wrong. Um, I also have a Juki T TL2000. I don't have the 2010, which is what a lot of bag makers have, but it is a great machine also for layers and it only does a straight stitch. I like basics. I like sticking to basics. Kat says, yes. Oh, yes, it is being weird. I'm so sorry about that. Um, are you using white thread? Yes, I am. I buy the white thread all-purpose Guterman in thousand meter spools, and I have that in the shop in case you're looking for it. Uh, I use it 90% of the time when I'm sewing. Even for, oh, I should show you this project I'm doing for Free Spirit has me doing uh, wedding rings, and the designer says use invisible thread for the top stitching and I don't want to. I'm using white because I like to see the stitching. It makes me feel more folksy. I just like it, personal preference. So yes, I have the white. Uh, I just bought clear filament thread from Guterman all purpose that supposedly does not melt when you iron. I'm gonna test that before I tell you to go buy it though. So give me a few days. Uh, let's see. Connie says, 
that's pretty together. Yes, I love Ruby Star fabric. And this actually has some gold in it, so it kind of picks up that iridescence in the peach crack vinyl. So I really like that. And stay tuned, because I'm going to have more of their fabrics really, really soon. Oh, yay, Marilyn! Her order should arrive today. Yay! Awesome. Connie says she uses Aurifil thread on her Janome. Oh, no, I've never heard. I only use Guterman, even on my Janome. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I think thread does matter for your machine. So it could be that your model works better with Aurifil. A few years ago, I was trying to use Aurifil on this machine, on my Bernina, and it kept snapping and breaking. It just did not work for me. I know Aurifil is a great thread, superior thread. It's great. But for my model, for this one, it doesn't work for me. It does work on my Skyline, my Janome Skyline, however. So I think you just got to give yourself permission to experiment and play with it. And I never listen to people. <laughs> I just make my own opinion. <laughs> Try it and see, right? Um, nice match. All right. Well, I think, thank you, Marianne. I think I've gone through here. I'm so glad that some of you found me. And I will try to put this link on Facebook later when they get fixed. If not, just know if you ever can't get it to work on Facebook, hopefully YouTube is working and I will be over here on YouTube. That's why I keep this channel, right? Uh, so I am going to get on with my day. I hope you have a great weekend. Let me know if you have any questions. I will be back next week, even though it's Black Friday. I'm going to be back talking about a couple of new things that have come in. Just real quick. Probably 10, 15 minute post. So I just don't want to skip it. Okay? So maybe see you next week. All right. Bye.